Okay, now we're doing to do these problems next as a little bit more review of pre-calculus. The reason why we're reviewing these is because this skill we need to going to use later when we get into finding the derivatives of the inverse trig function. So we'll have to know how to do that later, so that's why we want to review these first. Now, in order to do these, we're actually going to be solving them by drawing right triangles and labeling them using the definitions of the trig functions. But in order to do that, we have to know which quadrant the triangle is going to be in. Now I should mention that the instructions for this problem will tell you specifically, assume x is positive. That's important because we know that inverse tangent, is you can get angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so if we know that x is positive, that means that the angle has to only be in the first quadrant. In fact, that's going to be the case for both of these, inverse sine as well. Inverse sine would be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 also. But again, because you're assuming x is positive, and this result, this whole result you're going to assume ends up being positive because this one, I believe it tells you that your x is going to be greater than 1 here. So we know that for sure the ending result is going to be something positive. We know we can draw this in the first quadrant. So let's do that for this one. We're going to draw this in the first quadrant. And we want to label the sides based on what they give us here. Now, because they give us 4x, we want to write that as 4x over 1. So that way we can get two sides on our triangle. We're going to use the definition for tangent. Now the reason why we can do this and label the sides that way is remember that what's inside the parentheses, all that represents an, uh, an angle theta, which is actually the same one that we have here. So because theta is equal to inverse tangent, we can turn that into theta equals tangent of 4x, and that's why it allows us to label the sides that way. 4x over 1, that's opposite. So theta is here across the triangle, that's your opposite side. This is 4x. The longest side is hypotenuse, which means that your adjacent side must be this one here. So in order to answer this question, we have to find all three sides because the one on the outside, that's going to tell you how you're going to write your answer. So secant, once the triangle is all drawn, we're going to use our definition for secant in order to get our answer. Now secant involves hypotenuse over adjacent, so that's why we have to find the hypotenuse before we get our answer. We're going to do that by using Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so I have c squared is going to equal 1 squared plus 4 squared, a squared plus b squared. Remember that when you write this, you want to be careful. If you write that down, it's technically not correct because this is saying that the square only applies to the x. Don't forget that you have to put all that inside parentheses. That's the most common mistake that I see is people forget to put those parentheses there. So you're going to get 16x squared, and then you're going to square root both sides, and you get 1 plus 16x squared. We're only considering the positive square root here because your hypotenuse is always positive. You can't break that down anymore because there's a plus sign. You can't square root each of those individually, so you'll get 1 plus 16x squared here. So now that we have that complete, we're ready to answer this question. Secant refers to hypotenuse over the adjacent. So when we write our answer, it's just going to be the square root divided by 1, which means that we can just write our answer as 1 plus 16x squared, and then that would be my final answer. So therefore, all this right here can equivalently be written as an algebraic expression here, and so we written uh, as that one. Now let's take a look at part B. I mentioned earlier that this one's also going to be in the first quadrant. And again, we can write this as x minus 1 over 1, so that way we can label two sides. We're dealing with a sine. Remember that this is your theta. Theta is inside the triangle there. Your sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which means that x minus 1 is your opposite side. Hypotenuse, the longest side of the triangle, that's 1 in this case. To get the answer, we need to find this missing side. And we'll use Pythagorean theorem again for that one. So this time I have a squared, that's the missing side, x minus 1 squared equals 1 squared. Remember that your, your c is the longest side opposite the right angle, so we do have a value there for this one. And of course we can simplify that, we can expand that out. Okay, so when we do that we get x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 1 on that side there. 
and the ones we can cancel, we can move the 2x and the x squared over, so I get 2x minus x squared here, and then my a, a squared will end up being the square root. So my answer is 2x minus x squared, that's going to go in uh, right there. So again, square root both sides and you'll get this. Now for the answer, we need to use the definition for cotangent. Cotangent is the adjacent over opposite. So my answer is written as 2x minus x squared all over x minus 1. This would be the equivalent algebra expression for all this right here.